Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Harsha Ali Khan. So far, 10 problems I have completed on T-test. So in this video, 3 more problems I am going to explain you. Then the next video will be the final video on T-test. Hope my regular viewers are continuously watching all the videos on T-test because if you watch in between or one or two problems, you will not get the complete command. Different types of problems are there. In the last video, I have explained you paired t-test. The formula will be different. So you, it will not be given in the problem. You have to read the problem and identify what is the nature of the problem. Accordingly, we have to apply the different formulas. The procedure will remain same, but the formula for calculating the computed value will differ. That is the difference. Now in this video, I am going to explain you one problem on comparing the population mean with sample mean and two problems on comparing two different means so again this type of problem already we have done in the second third video again i am repeating but different problems are there so before starting the 11th problem i expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which i have given in the link under my description so always keep ready the problems and watch the video take the screenshot of the solution of these three problems then I explain come on see the 11th one Ashoka restaurant in the city has been averaging sales of 300 lunch packets per day. Due to construction of the new building complexes in the nearby area, Ashoka restaurant expects to increase the sales. During the first 16 days after the occupation of this building, the daily sales were given. 304, 367, 385, 386 like that. 16 sales values are given. On the basis of this information, will you conclude that Ashoka restaurant sales have increased? Assume 5% level of significance. This problem was also asked in examination. Ashoka restaurant is a hotel which, which makes packets, lunch packets. And the average sale packets are 300 packets per day. But what the Ashoka restaurant have observed? There are nearby some uh, buildings have been constructed, new complexes, buildings, apartments have been constructed nearby area. So Ashoka restaurant thought that the sales will increase. Their sales have increased due to the construction of the new complexes. Now the Ashoka restaurant wants to find out whether sales have increased or not. So they have taken a sample of 16 days sales packets. So during the 16 days period, how much are the per day? lunch packet sold that is given in the problem so sample size is 16 it's a small sample so we apply t-test sample mean and sample standard deviation is not given so first we need to calculate sample mean and sample standard deviation so here calculation of sample mean sample standard now serial number that means days days 1 2 3 4 up to 16 days data is given the sales for 16 days are given that is denoted as X. So whatever sales are given in the problem, I have copied down for 16. The total of summation X is 5120. The total lunch packet sold during 16 day period is 5120. In how many days? 16 days. So average how much? Sample mean X bar summation X by N 5120 divided by 16. You will get 320 packets. So sample mean shows 320 packets per day sold. Whereas earlier the lunch packet sold was 300. So apparently it looks like after the construction of the new building, the lunch packets sold have increased. The sale of lunch packets have increased. Earlier it was 300, now it is 320. Apparently without applying any testing. Now we apply the test and find out whether really increased or insignificantly increased that we want to prove now sample standard deviation so x bar we got 320 now we calculate d deviations d is equal to x minus x bar x minus 320 so 304 minus 320 16 minus 16 
367 minus 320 47 385 minus 320 65 386 minus 320 66 like this you calculate the all the values d now square it 16 into 16 you'll get 256 47 into 47 you'll get 2209 squaring take the total of the square 2 lakh uh, 25544 25,544 is summation d square. This we require for standard deviation. Now we know the formula for sample standard deviation. Summation d square by n under root. Already in the previous problem also we have applied this formula. Summation d square 25,544 divided by 16 under root. We'll get standard deviation 39.956. Now we are having n is equal to 16 sample size x bar sample mean is 320 we have calculated s small s sample standard deviation just now we have calculated 39.956 mu population mean when earlier how many packets were sold normally 300 packets that's all now we can apply the steps the first step null hypothesis no significant difference between population mean sample mean that means whatever the sale of lunch packets are there it is remaining same even after construction of the new buildings null means no difference the mu is equal to 300 no significant difference in sale of packets the average sale of packets is same so before construction of building and after construction of building it is same alternative hypothesis it has increased we want to confirm whether it is increased or not the alternative hypothesis mu greater than 300 because here it is taken mu 300 now here we will take more than 300 it is not saying less than 300 due to the construction of the new complexes the sales have increased not decreased so we will not take two tail test we will take one tail greater than so mu greater than 300 right tail test the sale of packets have increased due to the construction of new building so we have framed the null and alternative items Next level of significance alpha 0 0.05 given in the problem. Degree of freedom V is equal to N minus 1, 16 minus 1, 15. Test statistic. Starting first second problem, we have applied this formula. Uh, T is equal to X bar minus mu divided by S square S divided by under root n. S divided by under root n. So S is how much? S is equal to N divided by N minus 1 into S square under root. This formula already we have applied in the starting first and second problem on T test. When we compare sample mean with population mean. So N is 16. N minus 1, 16 minus 1, 15 into S square. S is how much here? 39.956 square. So first you square 39.956 into 39.956 into 16 divided by 15 under root so finally you will get s value 41.266 now substitute t is equal to x bar mu minus x bar 1 sorry x bar minus mu x bar is 320 minus 300 divided by 41.266 divided by root 16 n is 16 so under root 16 is 4 so finally t is equal to 1.94 the computed value of t is 1.94 now this will be compared with the critical value of t, table value of t. Now the table value of t at 5% level for v is equal to 15 for right tail test. One tail. So we have to see one column before. So this is the table. I have provided this PDF of this table in the description. Under the description a link is given. To open that link, take a printout and keep it ready. So this t table. How many, is the, how many is the degree of freedom? 15. So against 15, you see uh, 0 0.05, it is 2.13. Don't take 2.13. Before 2.13, it is 1.75. Because one tail test, one column before. 1.75 is the table value. So the critical region lies for t greater than equal to plus 1.75. One tail test. So the rejection region will lie only on right side. I'll draw a table here, small normal curve. Right tail test means the rejection region will lie only on right side. So 1.75. 1.75. 
तो एनी वैल्यू मोर देन वन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव विल फॉल इन रिजेक्शन रीजन दिस इज द रिजेक्शन रीजन एंड दिस इज द एक्सेप्टेंस रीजन नाउ यू टू सी वेदर अवर कंप्यूटेड वैल्यू विल फॉल इन रिजेक्शन रीजन और एक्सेप्टेंस इट इज वन पॉइंट नाइन फोर तो वन पॉइंट नाइन फोर विल गो हियर सो इट इज फॉलिंग इन द रिजेक्शन रीजन when it falls in rejection region we reject to the null hypothesis the null hypothesis what we have said no significant difference even after the construction of the building the sale remains same that is null and we have rejected null hypothesis we have accepted the alternative one in alternative hypothesis we have written the sales have increased and that is true the sales of the lunch packets have increased after the construction of the new complexes so value of t 1.94 is greater than the critical value so it falls in rejection region null hypothesis is rejected and we conclude that the sale of packets have increased after the construction of the new building that's it this is the problem number 11 now twelfth problem i'll do it in the next video because it's a lengthy problem it will not fit in the space that's why in the next video i'll make the twelfth problem now thirteenth problem you see The mean life of sample of ten electric bulbs was found to be one four five six hours, and standard deviation four twenty three hours. So we have selected a sample of ten electric bulbs, and for this sample of ten electric bulbs, the mean life one four five six, standard deviation four twenty three. A second sample of seventeen bulbs chosen from a different batch. So bulbs are produced in different batches: first batch, second batch. In the first batch, we have taken a sample of ten bulbs. We got the mean and standard deviation. Second sample, we have taken a sample of seventeen bulbs, and the mean is one thousand two eighty hours and standard deviation three ninety eight hours. Is there a significant difference in the mean of the two batches? This type of problem already we have done. We are comparing two samples. Bulbs are produced in first batch and second batch. We have taken some bulbs from the first batch. Calculated the mean and standard deviation. We have taken some bulbs in the second batch and calculated the mean and standard deviation. That is given in the problem. Now we compare the sample means and take the decision whether the average life of the two batches are same or not. So directly a shortcut method I have given because so many problems we have done. Unless the time will be wasted. Now n one is equal to ten, n two is equal to seventeen. Ten bulbs first batch, seventeen bulbs second batch. The average life of first batch is one four five six. Average life of the bulbs of second batch one two eight zero. Standard deviation of first batch four twenty three. Standard deviation of second batch three ninety eight. Null hypothesis mu one is equal to mu two. No significant difference between the average life of the two batches. Average life of bulbs of the two batches. Alternative hypothesis mu one not equal to mu two. Two tail test. There is significant difference in the average life of bulbs of the two batches. Level, uh, level of significance alpha point zero five assume not given in the problem. Degree of freedom v is equal to n one plus n two minus two. So ten plus seventeen minus two twenty five is the degree of freedom because we have two samples. Now test the statistic t is equal to x bar one minus x bar two divided by s square bracket one by n one plus one by n two under root. This formula already I have applied in the previous video. Previous videos we have done this type of problems. Now substitute the s square. First we find out s square. N one s one square plus n two s two square divided by n one plus n two. N one is ten. S one is four twenty three square. Plus n two is seventeen. S two is seven three ninety eight square divided by n one plus n two minus two. So if you solve this, you will get s square value one lakh seventy nine thousand two eighty six point three two. You calculate and find out. You will get this value. Now t is equal to x bar one minus x bar two. X bar one is one four five six minus one two eight zero divided by one lakh seventy nine two eighty six point three two one by ten n one n one is ten n two is seventeen right now computed value of t is zero point double zero six computed value of t now critical region the table value of t at zero point zero five for v is equal to twenty five degree of freedom twenty five. For two tail test, not equal to means two tail test is two point zero five. Two point zero five is the critical value, whereas computed value is zero point zero six, zero point double zero six. 
so 0.006 is less than 2.05 so ho is accepted now hypothesis is accepted no significant difference in the average life of bulbs of the two batches that's it this is the problem number 13 now problem number 15 you see 15th problem the left out problems will be done in the next video now 15th a sample of sales in similar shops in two towns are taken for a new product with the following results so we have taken sample sales mean sales of two towns a and b two samples the so mean sales of a town 5 b town 7 variance variance means standard deviation square the square of standard deviation is called variance the so variance of a town 5 variance of b town 3 sample size n1 is 5 n2 is 7 is there any evidence of difference in sales of the two towns use 5% level of significance to test this difference between the means of the two samples again exactly similar to the previous problem n1 is 5 n2 is 7 x bar in one is 5 x bar 2 is 7 s1 square only s1 is standard deviation when you square the standard deviation, it will become variance. So in this problem, variance is given. So S1 square variance is 5. S2 square variance is 3. Now null hypothesis mu1 is equal to mu2. No significant difference. Then alternative hypothesis mu1 not equal to mu2. Two tail test. There is significant difference in the mean sales. Level of significance alpha 0 0.05 given. Degree of freedom V is equal to N1 plus N2 minus 2. 5 plus 7 minus 2 10 test the statistic same formula x bar 1 minus x bar 2 s square 1 by n1 plus 1 by n2 first we calculate s square n1 n1 is 5 s1 square is 5 5 into 5 plus n2 is 5 s2 square already it is squared 3 n1 plus n2 minus 2 so s square we got 4.6 now easily we can find out t value 5 minus 7 and then x bar 1 minus x bar 2 so 5 minus 7 minus 2 divide by 4.6 into 1 by 5 plus 1 by 7 you will get 1.57734 under root so finally t value minus 1.59 this is a computed value of t now computed value of t uh, critical value of t at 5% level for v is equal to 10 at uh, 2 tail test is 2.23 so 2.23 is the critical value whereas computed value minus 1.59 so minus 1.59 is greater than minus 2.23 so it falls in acceptance region so minus 1.59 is greater than the critical value minus 2.23 so it falls in acceptance region null hypothesis is accepted no significant difference in the sales of the two towns now in a diagram I can be able to show it so that the concept will be clear regarding decision. Now this is the two tail curve. This is the normal curve and it is 2.23. The left side minus 2.23, right side plus 2.23. See carefully. And this shaded region is the rejection region. And unshaded region is the acceptance region. Right? Now, we got minus 1.59. So don't compare this plus 2.23 because our computer value is minus 1.59. Here comes minus. So any value which is lower than 2.23 will fall in rejection region. Any value which is higher than 2.23 it will fall in acceptance region. Now 1.59 will fall here. Minus 1.59. Minus 1.59 is greater. Minus 1.59 is greater than minus 2.23. So it falls in acceptance region. The null hypothesis, this is accepted. That means no difference in sales in the two towns. That's it. So this is the end of the problem number 15. Totally 15 problems we have done. In between one or two problems we have left. That we will do it in the next video. So next video will be last video on t-test. So comparatively more problems we have in t-test compared to z-test or chi-square test or n-over. 
So after completing the t test, I'll start the next topic, uh, chi square test or ANOVA. Inshallah, we'll continue the next uh, problem in the next video.